Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day 33 of Lent. We are, what, Sunday, the fifth week of Lent, so Sunday of Passion Tide. And I slept in a little, a little late this morning, and we're doing this actually live. So you'll have to excuse me uh, all the times I screw up reading or mis- mispronounce a word or something. I will not be able to edit out of this, so we'll have to just live through it together, I guess. <laughs> Um, but anyways, we're once again doing our meditations from Meditations for Lent by Bishop Jacques Bossuet. The book is from Sophia Institute Press. These go out on video on YouTube and Spiritus TV and on all all the different audio podcast apps. And I'm going to throw up an image on screen. There won't be anything to watch, uh, anything to look at. You just, you just listen and meditate on what is being said. Uh, man, I can't even pause. I usually pause the recording between some of this stuff. But anyways, I'm going to throw up the image and we're going to get started. Okay. So like I said, day 33, Sunday. Sunday of Passion Tide, the fifth week of Lent. The raising of Lazarus. Jesus nears Jerusalem. He is already at Bethany, a village at the foot of the Mount of Olives. His death nears what he does to prepare for us what he does to prepare us for it is miraculous he raises lazarus from the dead jesus was going up to jerusalem to die and it would seem that death's empire was stronger than ever once he had fallen under its power but he works the greatest miracle the great miracle of the raising of lazarus to show us that he is death's master all of the terror of death is here before us Lazarus is dead, enshrouded, entombed, and already decaying and putrid. They fear to move the stone covering his tomb, lest they infect the place and loose its unbearable stench. Here is a horrid spectacle. Jesus shudders to see the tomb, and he weeps. In the death of his friend Lazarus, he deplores the punishment shared by all men. He looks upon human nature as created for immortality, but condemned to death by sin. He is the friend of all mankind, and he comes to restore us. He commences by shedding a tear for our disaster, and shuddering at the sight of the punishment that he himself will soon face for us. To him, what seems so awful about death is chiefly that it is caused by sin. It is sin, rather than death, that moves him to shudder, to be troubled in spirit, and to weep. He is all the more greatly moved as as he draws near the tomb, this frightful cavern where the dead man has been laid. What can be done? Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? John 11.37 They did not ask whether he could raise him because they could not imagine it to be possible. They thought that all Jesus could offer in the presence of this evil were his tears and sorrow. Here is all mankind in death. Nothing is to be done except to lament its fate. No other resource is at hand. So the story begin. So does the story begin. The opening scene is one of desolation. Yet the second is all consolation where we see the power and victory of Jesus over death. Jesus says, This illness is not unto death. It is for the glory of God. John 11.4 Yet, Lazarus did in fact die. What the Savior meant is that death would be here vanquished, and the Son of God glorified in the victory. He continued, Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him out of sleep. John 11.11 Calling his death a falling asleep and showing that it is easy for him to raise the dead as to awaken a sleeper. sleeper. As he approaches, he is progressively revealed to be the victor over death. If you had been here, Martha says, my brother would not have died. And even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. John 11. 21-22 21-22 through 22. You are all powerful, not only to prevent death, but also to wrest its prey from its grasp. Your brother will rise again. 
I know that he will, says Martha, on the last day. John 11, 23-24 She does not doubt that Jesus can resurrect him before then, but she does not think herself worthy of that grace. Let us savor the words of Jesus to Martha, after which death has no sting. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. John 11, 25-26 He will never die. Death for him will be only a journey. He will not remain there, and he will arrive at a condition in which he will never die. Martha's faith is great. In her spirit she sees the general resurrection and confesses Jesus Christ as the one who, being in heaven and in the Father's bosom, is come into the world. Jesus, Son of the living God, lives with, with the same life as his Father. As the Father has life in himself, he says, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. John five twenty six. It is with good reason, then, that he tells us that he is the resurrection and the life. And as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. John 5, 21. He is a source of life. He is the same life as the Father. Life came to us when he became man. We proclaim to you, says St. John, the eternal life which was, which was with the Father and it was made manifest to us. 1 John 1, verse 2. Father, I know that thou hearest me always. John eleven forty two. Thus we are delivered, for such an intercessor speaks on our behalf. Lazarus, come out. The prophets had raised several men from the dead, but none of them had treated death in such an imp imperious manner. It was, as the Savior said, the hour when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. John 5, 25 What is done now for Lazarus alone, one day will be done for all men. It is important that we meditate upon these words and deeds so that we may be strengthened against the fear of death, which is so extreme in us that it is capable of making men lose their minds. We must arm ourselves against this fear, chiefly by meditating upon the promises of the gospel and attaching ourselves with a living faith to the, the truth that Jesus had vanquished death. He did so in the case of a young girl still in her bed, a widow's son being carried on a bier, and in the person of Lazarus. These three to whom he restored life remained mortal, what was left for him to do was to vanquish mortality itself. It was in his own person that he would win so perfect a victory. After he had been he had been put to death, he rose, never to die again. And without having first seen corruption, as the psalmist sings, Thou wilt not let thy holy one see corruption. Psalm fifteen ten. What was done in the head will be accomplished in the members. Immortality has been assured to us by Jesus Christ. Okay, there is our meditation for today. And if you think of recent events over the last four years, give or take, if you know what I mean, um, what Bishop Basway says there about why we meditate on on how Jesus defeated death. Um, he's right. The fear of death makes people lose their minds. Think of think of the last four years. Think of the things we've seen and the the think of the things people have gone through to avoid getting a severe cold or a flu, right? Uh, the masking. The, I mean, you and you see it online, especially um, people still masking. Uh, people. Um, disinheriting family members, you know, because they decided that four years later now not to mask it. I mean, people are so afraid of death, so afraid 
that it can make people do the most idiotic in, in on one hand and also just the most horrendously tyrannical terrible things on the other all all because they're afraid of what comes to all of us so we we as catholics we have to we have to meditate upon it we we need to you know that's why memento mori is so important um you know remember death um because it comes to all of us one time or another we can't stop it uh, so we just have to be prepared for it uh pray to saint joseph the patron of a good death and here comes one of my children. Which one is it going to be? It's Ignatius, everyone. Good old Iggy. You want to say hi? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> say happy Sunday. Happy Yeah. Okay. I'm, okay. Well, that's it for today, everyone. And as you can see, uh, I did not have enough purple cloth to, well, I didn't have any purple cloth actually to cover all the holy images of my house, which is what we do during Passion Tide. But anyways, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, yes, Iggy, hold on. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all again tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm.